Hey, what's going on, guys? It is finally here. The Rashetta, the 30-minute sisters line of kits from Bandai is finally here. It's This has been out for a little while now, but it's taken me a while to actually get my hands on the kit. Uh, I've also got the second one is now out and a bunch of option parts, which we'll be taking a look at in a couple of following videos after this. But for now, let's check out the original, the first one, the Rashetta. All right, guys, so one reason why I'm quite excited to try this line out is because, in my opinion, Bandai's attempts so far to break into the Mecha Musume line have not been very successful. I have just not really been very pleased with the kits compared to what you can get from other companies like Kodobukiya and now even like the Attack Girls line and things like that. But these kits do look pretty promising, so I'm keeping an open mind to see how these will compare, and of course I'll let you guys know in the review portion once we get this all built up. At the very least, they're much more affordable than the Kotobuki options, so that's nice. Right here on the front of the box, you got some cool artwork there, a close-up of her face there in the background, and then kind of a full character illustration here. Sis Goo for the number there for that, color A, and I don't know if there's gonna be other different color options of this releasing it, they'll be like, uh, I haven't seen anything about it as far as I can remember from P-Bandai or anything like that, but this is the Rashetta there, number zero one in the line. On this side of the box, got to look at our face options. We got three of those, kind of a happy, very happy, and a little bit angry face. 145 millimeters in height when it's all put together. We got some joint parts for connecting the kit onto an action base. Here's how it looks like unarmored and armored, or basically just kind of with some extra armor pieces that are included with this. So here's the armored mode. So you have those pieces that you can use. And then of course you can customize it by mixing and matching other different parts. You can also mix and match with 30 minutes missions parts, obviously, and we'll try some of that out later on. Here it is on the other side of the box is actually talking about that. So there you go, it's showing how you can mix some of those parts there with the Spinachio uh, Sengoku type there, for example. And as you guys can see, it's a pretty thin box. So as I was saying before, these are much cheaper than Kodobuki options, but I mean, just the, the box is much smaller. Uh, but we'll see in terms of parts, I mean, obviously they look relatively simple there, not a ton of parts. On the front of the menu, this is really cool how it tells you the character design team and also the figure sculptor right there, which is, that's interesting and cool for them to put right there. You also have the illustration artist right here as well. So it's nice to see all those names right there. So here is the sister and here is the character making so you can use the different hair option parts and so we'll take a look at that in a future video. Uh, to kind of change the look of the character by just changing the hair pieces, which is, should be simple enough to do. On the back side, once again, just talking about customizing it with some 30 minutes missions parts, and then again down here, mixing and matching parts and doing all that. So very good, it should all be compatible. That's the kind of name of the game. Here's the parts list there in color. The rest of the construction is all just in black and white. You got a little chibi character popping in to say the normal mode is complete. So we'll have some character commentary along the way, which is all in Japanese and English, which is cool. Exchange the parts for different scenes, very good. Anyway, so that's a kind of cute little addition to the manual. Let's go ahead and check out the runners. So no stickers or polycaps included with this, so we can just get right into the runners, including here to be FPA, so face parts A uh, number one here. And that looks very nice. The printing on there does look good, even like the little bit of rosiness to the cheeks and everything. Number two is our smiling face there like that. And at number three is our angry attacking face like that. FPA4 is going to be parts for the neck and the kind of back of the face. The full A runner has some more skin tone parts over there on the side, some orange up here at the top, some gray over here on this side, and some black down there at the bottom. Interesting how this runner is separated into like part three, part two, part one, and part four there it looks like. Runner B here in black. This runner is marked 30 minutes sisters joint runner. So this is probably going to be just our standard joint runner shared by all of the different versions of the kit there in black. And we got the same marking here for the C runner. Some more parts there in orange and that same 30 minutes sisters joint marking here on the D runner. Some more parts for the arms and legs there in black. And then runner HPA1 is going to be, I'm guessing HP standing for hair parts. Runner A1 here in this light gray color for the hair parts and that's it. So I gotta say, simple but does look promising. Let's go ahead and get it all put together and see what she's like. 
So all right guys, here is the kit all built up and I gotta say I'm a little bit impressed. Yeah, definitely Bandai did a good job on this and compared to past Mechamasume attempts that they've made, I think this is definitely safe to say this is they're on the right path. This is definitely the best. The only one I think it'd really be fair to compare this to like the best attempt they've had so far up to this point, I think is probably the Diver Nami kit, which is a really fun kit. And I think if you're just talking about like which one between the two of these, what I recommend. That one is really nice, but the, of course the big thing about the 30 minute sisters kits is just the customizability so we'll get into that here in just a bit but so let's just start off by taking a closer look at this and overall the kit is very solid so that's nice you do of course have a couple of seam lines around on here on the upper arm on the thigh but in general the amount of seams on here are going to be less than what you would normally see on a release from Kotobukiya it seems like Bandai is pretty good about designing their parts most of the time uh, to try to hide the seam lines where Kotobukiya just kind of doesn't really seem to care too much about that. On like a typical frame arms girl kit or something you'd have seam lines down the arms and like down the middle of the thighs and the lower legs and all that but the way these parts go together hides most of the seam lines except for the thighs, the top of the thighs and the top of the arms there so that's good. We got a double joint here for the neck, there's a little bit of movement at the base, not really a whole lot, most of the movement is going to be from the ball joint there at the top and you do have a hinge that will allow you to bend the neck off to the side there like that from side to side. So pretty good standard neck movement there. Right here between the upper and lower half of the torso, you have a ball joint connecting that so you can move that around side to side, forward and back a little bit. And then down here between the torso and the uh, hip section, you have some movement here as well. So uh, between the two joints, you can bend forward to about there, which is really honestly not that much. Kind of would, would have been nice if it was maybe a little bit more and then back to there, but it's pretty standard. The shoulder is on a ball and socket joint, but the plastic piece inside of there that the ball joint plugs into does pull out to the front a little bit like that for some forward movement here at the shoulder. Otherwise, it's just movement on a ball joint. Then you have uh, some rotation here at the top of the arm for bringing the arm up. In the middle of the bicep, you have your point of rotation there for rotating the arms. At the elbow, you have a single joint, but you got a pretty good range of movement for that all the way up to here. The wrist is also very similar as to what you would see in like a Kotobukiya kit, Mangami device, or frame arms grow where it's two pieces and so you have rotation and then you also have a bend there but the point of articulation is not straight as it is with Kotobukiya kits it's on a 45 degree angle so when you bend the wrist it's automatically like turning and bending at the same time because of the angle that it's set at so it's a kind of interesting way to do that a little bit differently it works pretty well for the wrist articulation the hip joint will allow you to bring the leg up to about there that's going to be about the extent of that but it's basically like 45 degrees the hip joint will allow you to bring the leg up up to about there, basically perpendicular, just out to the front at a 90 degree angle. Here's what that looks like, just kind of all around. It's gonna be about the extent of that out to the side. It's gonna be about to there. And then you've got some rotation here in the middle of the thigh, just right there where that's connected. Got a double joint there at the knee, giving you a nice full bend there like so. And then the ankle joint is similar to the wrist joint is that it's on a 45 degree angle. So rotating that will kind of move it to the side like so. You can also bend that forward and back very nicely up underneath the feet. You got some nice detail there as well. So overall, pretty good articulation, pretty standard for Megami device, uh, Kotobukiya, Frame Arms Girl kits, all that kind of stuff is all pretty similar to what you're gonna get out of the articulation of this as well. As for the hard points, these gray bits here on the front of the leg can be removed to expose some um, three millimeter size holes there for attaching on different option armor pieces or whatever. And around here on the back, you've got a hard point up at the top and then one in the small of the back. And that's it for what you have just here in the basic form, but in amongst our option parts, we're gonna have some more here. So like this orange bit here in the middle of the thigh, you can replace that one with this piece here, which will give you a peg out the side that then you can plug onto some, again, option weapon or option armor, or whatever you might want to plug onto the side of the leg. And then we've got that here for the upper arm as well. So just remove this orange piece. And of course we've got two of all of these connector pieces. So you don't need to worry about that. You can have them for both the left and the right side or one or the other. So you got one right there and then you have another one as well, which will actually go down here at the wrist. So you just take off the hand that just fits over the wrist there like that. And then you can plug something onto the side of the forearm right there, like a little shield bit or an extra little piece of armor or something, or again, a weapon, whatever you might want to plug onto the side of the arm. Once we got all of our connection pieces on there, then we can start adding on the extra armor bits that we have included with this set anyway, which are going to be some here for the side of the leg 
side right here like that. And then these pieces are gonna plug onto the side here. So these are not your standard adapter points of just three millimeter hole, they're a little bit different style. So you'll have these pieces which will fit onto here specifically like that. But what these extra armor bits on the side will do is not only add some extra armor themselves, but also give you some more hard points to plug in more stuff onto the side of there if you wanted. So you got those on the arm, on the legs. Up here on the shoulders, you've got these pieces that'll plug onto there. And again, then that'll give you a female adapter point for adding even more onto this if you wanted. And then just like with the lower legs, you have these bits of armor which will plug onto the back of the arm right here. That'll also give you a new attachment point there for adding on more stuff, but it's your it's like a C-clip type attachment point for like some of the different armaments and arms and leg parts of the Third Man's Missions kits, things like that that you can plug onto the side of there. And then onto the sides of the hands, of course we've got our kind of claw hands that you can plug onto there. So here's with all of the added armor bits added onto the legs and the arms. We do then also have the cat's tail, which will just plug into the back of here just like that. And that's just one piece, so you can just kind of rotate that. There's not any further articula articulation. Unless you were to get two of these kits, then you could plug two of these tails in together to make an even longer tail, which could be kind of cool. Then you've got this part, which is sort of like a, a backpack for, but this is also just kind of an adapter, basically. You just plug this onto the back, and then you can just have it on there just as a backpack. It just is like an extra little kind of piece of armor there, but this will give you an adapter to plug the backpacks of 30 Minutes Missions kits onto there, because those have the two peg system, which will plug into the two holes on the back of there like that. Then of course we have the cat ears so in order to put those on you kind of have to take this hair apart because you need to remove a tiny little piece there out the top of the hair. I guess I could do it there just with my nail and you're just going to plug in this piece there instead and that's going to give us our little cat ears tiara there on the top of the head and last couple things here for our hand options we've either got closed fists or holding hands. Those are going to be the only options that we have with these unfortunately so really would have liked if they would have come with like at least a set of open hands or something as well. And then we've got this adapter piece which is for taking the head from the 30 minute sisters kit and then plugging this onto the ball joint for the head of a 30 minutes missions kit. So you just plug that up into there and then that will fit onto the ball joint, the ball joint neck piece for a 30 minutes missions kit. So if you wanted like a robot body with just the girl head on top, you could use this adapter piece for that. For a quick size comparison, here is the Frame Arms Girl Architect and a Megami device kit there as well. As you can see, the Frame Arms Girls kits are a little bit larger. They're 1 10 scale. The Megami device kits are 1 12 scale. Uh, technically one to one scale, but they're more like one twelve scale. Anyway, they're a little bit smaller, and the Thirty Minutes Sisters lines seem to be right about at the same scale, uh, same size as the Megami device kits. And there's the R HG RX782 kit in there, it's just so you guys can have an idea how this would compare to like a normal one to one forty four scale Gundam kit as well. But I'm sure you're also going to want to know about some compatibility between the two. So let's go ahead and try out some of that. For example, let's see if the arms can be switched here. And the Megami device arm on the Bandai kit is a perfect fit. So that works and I can assume it'll be a perfect fit the other way around as well. So there you go. It's looking a bit funky, but I can assume it should hopefully be the same for the legs as well. Let's go ahead and try that. But I think there's a little bit more variation between the different Megami device kits. The legs can be a little bit different. So this one, yeah, it's not going to fit on there, but I don't know if that would necessarily be the case for all of them. And obviously I don't think this would be a difficult modification to make. Basically it's too loose now. It won't stay on there. As for the heads, I can tell right away that the ball joint is much larger. So again, if you wanted to like swap the heads, the Megami device head is going to be really loose on here. So you'll have to do some modification to get that to be the right size to fit on there. And then inversely, the 30 minute sister head is not going to fit onto the ball joint there for the Megami device kit. But as you guys can clearly see with this kit, they're very definitely made to be customized. That's the whole thing with the line, with the 30 Minutes Missions line, and now with these 30 Minutes Sisters line. So there's a lot of opportunity for customization. That said, in this particular video, I just want to focus on what you get just with this particular kit. If you're not buying anything else outside of that, we'll talk about some of the option parts and things in an upcoming video. So if you want to see more examples of some of the things that you can do with some of the currently available option sets, I'll do a little bit more of that in a following video. But for now, guys, I can tell you that I'm definitely impressed with this line. And definitely looking forward to building some more in the line, uh, trying out some different options and just really having some fun with it. The really great thing about these is that they're kind of simple and solid in that way. And that means that they're maybe not quite as detailed and nice as some of the Kotobukiya kits are in terms of just like their detail and having just like lots of little parts. But on the plus side of that is that you don't really have little bits and things falling off with the Kotobukiya kits. Sometimes they can be a little bit fragile and you have to be kind of careful with them. With this one, I feel like it's just kind of your standard Gundam 
kit where you could like throw it against a wall and nothing's gonna break on it. So that is definitely one thing that Bandai excels at with their kits. Again, most of the time is making them pretty solid and very durable and that I'm definitely feeling that with these. So I think this is this line is gonna be a lot of fun to play around with. So definitely let me know your guys' thoughts down in the comment section below. What do you think about the line so far as it's just kind of started getting going? Have you got any of the kits yet? What do you think about them? Uh, and are you planning on picking up some of the line? Or I hope you guys found this video helpful and informative if you are just not sure about the line yet you wanted to get some uh, uh, different thoughts and opinions on it. Now that I shared mine with you, what do you think about the line? As always, you can check out some of the kits at USA Gundam Store and the link to USA Gundam Store and the coupon code for you guys to use will be down in the video description below. And just want to say thank you to you guys all so much for your support. Liking the video, commenting, subscribing is all greatly appreciated. Up next, we'll be taking a look at the Tiasha and then a bunch of different option sets and things. So stay tuned for that. Until next time, hope you guys are all having a great day. I'll see y'all later. Bye guys.